2022 in a sunny Birmingham. I'm delighted here to have Sharon Kinsey of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport and we're going to be talking about attracting a diverse new generation of logistics monitors into our industry and today we've seen the launch of the Generation Logistics Initiative of which the Chartered Institute is very much a major player. So, hello Sharon. Hello. Hello. And my first question is, how do you feel about your appointment as the new Chief Executive of the Institute? No, thanks for inviting me here and I'm Good. really enjoying my new role. I started it almost a month ago, so I'm just learning to get to grips and learn everybody's names. But I think now's an amazing time to join the organisation. We've seen the problems that a supply chain industry that's not working properly can bring with shortages in the shops. And I think now we've got this real amazing opportunity to sort of widen the attraction of the profession and get more people into it to keep the industry working. Indeed, I think you know the logistics supply chain, as Grant Shapp said last night, you know, kept uh, UK, PLC and people with everything they wanted so that nobody went short. Um, now, we need to attract uh, a, a new diverse intake of youngsters into the industry. Um, how diverse is the industry at the moment? Even despite what you think looking around multimodal, it's not as diverse as we'd like it to be. Um, roughly 89% of the industry identifies themselves as white. Um, and in a survey of senior management, the female respondent number was so low, it's pretty much come out that 100% of senior roles are held by men. I think that isn't the case, but it's still a lot higher than it should be. Um, and I've also seen a fact that says the average age of an HGV driver is, is over 50 years old. So we've obviously got an issue there, we've got an ageing demographic in the industry and it's quite staid, so we've really got to look at how we're going to get younger and more, more diverse talent in. It does sound like a, a real mountain in Everest to climb. How does the Institute plan to in, encourage young professionals or the industry itself to adopt a more inclusive workforce? The Generation Logistics programme is going to be really fundamental in that. It's looking to attract 16 to 24 year olds into the profession who may not even have thought of supply chain and logistics as a career path. So we're sort of reaching out to them and telling them the exciting things the industry can do. And then as they go through their career, uh, the Institute's providing training, it's providing chartered certifications, so they've got a really clear career path. So when they're going for promotion, they can be mentored, they can prove that what they've done is relevant. And we're really leading them through their entire career life. So that, you know, 10, 20 years time, we can have more diverse people in senior management roles. And we're also working on continual professional development with, you know, events like multimodal, We've got our conference next week. We've got the transport planners meeting at two weeks' time. We're actually doing knowledge gathering and knowledge sharing so people can keep their, their information up to date and still feel relevant and know what the future trends are. What do you think are the biggest barriers to achieving diversity and inclusion in this great space? It's a bit of a staid saying, but if you can't see it, you can't be it. So I think we've very much got the problem when, when young people are coming through school, they don't know anyone in their family, they don't know anyone in their neighbourhood who, who's in the supply chain and logistics profession. They sort of think it's people sleeping in lorries at the side of the road and they don't really understand the full richness of all the jobs. So I think it's up to us as a profession really to say, look at all the things you can do, look at all the roles. And also to be welcoming to everybody to, to you know, bring the person you are to work. So we've got a pride forum, so we're really keen to promote LGBTQ people and we've got a new chairman in Michelle Moorhead who's leading our pride forum. We're also looking at accessibility and inclusion forum. How do we make sure both the profession is accessible but also the services we're offering are accessible. And really we're just trying to make people feel welcome and make a safe space anyone who wants to can come and work here we're not going to judge you because of the color of your skin your religion your gender anything like that how do you make the sector more attractive to this growing base of young people it's a mix i think it's having exciting jobs it's making people understand that you don't have to stay in the same world all your life particularly at the entrepreneurial and as, as things evolve the jobs evolve as well, so it's, they can, you can have a growing life with the profession. You don't have to just come in and do the one job. And it's also, you know, how we're going to support you, it's develop, these development activities. And also in our magazine, Transport Focus, we like to show people living the life. 
So we've had people like Mel Clark, who's going to be in our next month's magazine edition, and she was a winner of our um, Diversity Award. Um, at the CILT Awards, when somebody wins the Rising Star Award, we actually invite them, if they'd like to be, to become a vice president. So one of my very close body of advisors. So I want to be listening to these young rising stars and, and hearing things from their side of life. Okay. Um, diversity and attracting young talent in the industry is one part of, of the role, but how does that fit in with the, the other longer term parts of the vision for the, for the Institute? I think this gets back to the training. We, we, we want to be a whole of life organisation, so we don't just want you when you've got your degree and you've just got chartered and then, you know, please keep paying your, paying your membership fees. We want to work with you to offer the continual professional development, to offer training that's relevant so our members can keep up to date and understand what's going on. So PTRC, which is part of our organisation through lockdown and now is doing fireside chats for just an hour of conversation with experts about a wide range of subjects. So we're trying to make everything we do really relevant and not just assume we've seen you, you're chartered or you become a fellow, thank you very much. We're taking everybody through. We also have policy forums and special interest forums. So where there's an industry issue we'd like to look at around freight, for example, or around borders, we bring groups of our members together so they can talk about it and come up with ideas themselves and support each other and learn best practice. It sounds more like a family than an institute. Really, it? I'd like to think it is. We've got members of all ages who can teach each other things. There's younger people who are certainly teaching me things. We've got our older members who have got a wealth of, you know, 30, 40 years in the industry to pass on their knowledge. So I think it's like any family. We've got to listen to the generation above us and the generation below us. You know, with a healthy dose of sort of scepticism, but there's some real good pearls of wisdom in there. It's great to hear. Well, Alan, thank you very much. Congratulations on your new role. It sounds exciting, and I'm sure in a year's time, we'll see diversity galore. Yeah, I'm really hoping that way. Thank you very much. Thank you.